The Windows Remote Assistance allows you to connect two computers together, where one computer can see what the other person is doing on their computer over the internet. And this can be helpful if I'm running into problems and I keep opening up a file or a folder or program and I get this error code and I don't know what it means and I need help, I can go ahead and request somebody whom I trust to be able to have access and see what's on my computer here and walk me through it. So if I'm the one that wants to request somebody's help to be able to view my computer, you want to open up the Windows Remote Assistance program and you can do that by coming down, clicking on the Start button, clicking on All Programs, find the Maintenance folder, click on it to expand it, and then click on Windows Remote Assistance. It opens up. We want to go ahead and invite somebody who we trust to be able to view my screen, click on it, and I get three choices. The first two here require or involve sending a file to the other person. And then the last one here doesn't require a file, just a password, but it's only for those computers that are running Windows 7. If they're not, then you have to send them a file, either saving it to your desktop so you can send it through your web-based email program, or if you have an email program on your computer, just click on this, and it'll go ahead and open up your email program, attach the file to the email, type the address of who you're sending it to, click send, and off it goes. Then when the person gets that file, all they have to do is double-click to open it up, and it will activate or open up the Windows Remote Assistance on their program, and then all you have to do is call them up and give them the password. For example, if I go ahead and click on Save This Invitation, it opens up the window and says, okay, where do you want to save it? Well, to my desktop, click on Desktop, and then click Save. And it does two things. First of all, it saves the file to my desktop, and then it opens up the Windows Remote Assistance here with the password. So I can go ahead, open up Internet Explorer, log into my web-based email, go ahead and create an email, attach this file to it, send it off. When the person gets it, they can go ahead and double-click on it. And like I said, it'll open up the Windows Remote Assistance. It'll ask them for a password. You call them, they call you. You go ahead and give them this password. And it's all case sensitive. Let me go ahead and close out and say yes to end this remote assistance session. Of course, I'll right-click and delete that and send it to the garbage. The other way, let me click on Start to All Programs, Maintenance Folder, Windows Remote Assistance. Click on Invite again, was to come down here and use Easy Connect. Well, well, this is the same as sending an invitation, except I'm using it with my email program I have installed on my computer than using web-based email. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip right to Easy Connect, click on it, gives me the password. All I have to do is call up anybody who has Windows 7, give them the password, then they'll be able to access or at least view my computer here. So let's go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and talk to Jason and say, Jason, go ahead and I need your assistance here to view my desktop. Here's the password. He opens up Windows Remote Assistance, and instead of inviting, he chooses the other option, help somebody, and then it'll ask him for the password. I read the password to him. He types it in, clicks OK, and then it gives me a little prompt. Hey, would you like to allow the laptop to connect to your computer? So I'll go ahead and say yes. The color scheme changes. Instead of the Windows arrow effects, it goes to basic, or the basic theme, not the arrow theme. And then he's viewing my uh, desktop right now. You can see up here we've got the little toolbar. It says Windows Remote Assistance being held by laptop. You can click on Stop Sharing, or if you don't get that option, you can't click on it, and you really want to cut the connection here, you can just go ahead and close out. Or if you want to do something and not have them see what you're doing, click Pause, and then they can't see your desktop. Their screen goes black. And then when you're ready, go ahead and click Continue. And like I said, if you want to stop it and you can't get to it, just hit the X. And it automatically boots Jason out of the uh, remote session here. So this is what Jason did on his end. He clicked on the Start, went to All Programs. Again, the Maintenance folder to go to Windows Remote Assistance. Instead of clicking on Invite, we had the password for him. So he clicked on Help Someone Who Has Invited You. Click on that. And then you'll notice on my computer that if I want to help somebody new, I can click on here. But if I previously have helped them, then Jason's laptop, because I helped him, is going to be listed here. So let's go ahead and click on Help Someone New. Then I can go ahead and click Use Easy Connect. And then I just ask him, Jason, for his password. And then I type it in here. And then when I'm done, go ahead and click OK. And then this is what I see until Jason on his computer gets that little pop-up that says, hey, do you want Kurt or the user train to connect to your computer? He can go ahead and say yes. And now I can go ahead and see his computer, see what's going on. Hey, look at all these things. Let me go ahead and mess with them. 
I can see what's going on and he can move his mouse around. You can see him moving the mouse around, double clicking, opening up a folder. You can see on my end here, if he's not moving his mouse fast enough or he doesn't know where he's going, I can come up here on the toolbar, click on Request Control. When I click on it, you can see it pops up on his screen. This isn't mine, this is his, but I'm allowed to see his screen. And do you want me to have control training? I'll say yes. And then notice when I move the mouse around, his little mouse follows. Pretty cool. So if I double click on carry, it opens it up. I can close out. I can even go ahead and click on his stop sharing. Uh-oh. In which case, I'm not going to be able to share his mouse. And then if he needs to go away for a minute and clicks on pause, my screen goes black. When he clicks on continue, I can see it again. And then when he's done, you can just go ahead and click on the X to close out and I'm done. I can no longer see a screen, so that's that. Now as you recall, when I opened up the Windows Remote Assistance and I clicked on Help Someone Who Has Invited You and it's either somebody new or if it was Jason that invited me, I can click on that. In which case, Jason needs to go on his computer, start his Remote Assistance, and then invite me using the Easy Connect. So again, I'll go ahead and tell him to invite me and when he invites me he can invite somebody new somebody who he hasn't helped or select my name training so he's connecting to me on one end I'm connecting to him on another and you may just have to be patient and chat for like 30 seconds or so until it connects and there it finally connects this is nice because again we don't have to share a password back and forth because we already connected once we just need the password to initially connect and then all future connections we just have to go ahead and select that person's name that we connected to previously or the name of their computer, their username. And then he can go ahead and say yes and yay, I can see him again, but not for long because he's going to go ahead and close out. Let me go back to the Windows Remote Assistance. So when I click on Invite Somebody You Trust, there's his computer now. So it's not only there when I invite somebody because I've already connected to Jason once, but it's also when I want to help him. So all programs. I clicked on invite. He was there. When I click on help, he's there as well. So Windows 7 will now remember my previous connections. And again, only those computers that are running Windows 7 can use this easy connect. Otherwise, you have to do it the other way and send them an actual file and then also call them up and give them the password. And you'll have to do that every time until they, well, upgrade to Windows 7, in which case make the first connection using the password and then every connection thereon, they don't need the password. They just have to be coordinating with you. So if you try to sneak into Jason's laptop and you click on it, just keep spinning and spinning until you call Jason up and say, hey, can you run remote assistance and can you go ahead and invite me using Easy Connect? So at least there's a nice layer of security there that he has to be collaborative and be able to work with me to connect to his laptop where I just can't go ahead and take control. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for all my training, please visit me at my website, dreamforce.us.